we're completely in the dark on what we're drinking, but you know this is going to be a fun head-to-head -head one way or another. We're going to get into them, find out so that you get an unbiased opinion on what's in the glass. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Aaron. I'm Josh, and we are back with another completely double blind tasting where we have no clue what we're drinking. Nope. All these matchups are drawn from our blind sample pool full of a bunch of bourbons and ryes that have been paired together for one reason or another. It could be almost anything in this glass, but we will smell it, taste it, give it a rating, see yeah. what we think about it before we find out what we're drinking so that you get the most unbiased opinions possible. If you like that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the nose. Ooh. <laughs> Add an instant <laughs> visualization of baby powder cotton candy. Baby powder yeah. cotton candy. Don't ask. I don't know. I don't know. I is don't. it is it baby powder and cotton candy? No. Is the cotton candy made out of baby powder? Yes. It is? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's That was just like the mind picture that I got and it doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense. I'm just speaking yeah. what I thought. If you're new here, we are not professional whiskey tasters. We're just fun social sippers sharing our experience with you guys. I'm a little more whiskey nerdy. Erin is a social sipper who's got a palate far better than she'd like to give herself credit for. <laughs> And she likes to come up with these. Uh, no, you don't come up with them. No, they it's they just, present themselves they to you. They present themselves to me. It's when I smell something or taste something, if there's an image that I get in my mind, I'm going to tell you because yeah. I don't know what I'm supposed to get. So I just tell you what I get. Right. And sometimes it doesn't make sense, like cotton candy, baby powder, cotton candy. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. You're watching this and you're like, what is she talking about? I'm wondering the same thing, but I'm smelling this glass. She's right. That's what this smells like. <laughs> it kind of has like a little bit of like a, a powdery yeah. freshness to it. Yeah. And then there's also kind of this like thin sugary sweetness fluffy. to it. Fluffy. It's like a fluffy sugariness. Yeah. It's not jumping out of the glass. It smells very, very faint. I'm kind of having to dig for anything. It just smells generally sweet. Kind of like a classic Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. Let's get it on the palate and see what we're working with. Okay. There's a lot more on the palate than I thought based on how yeah. faint the nose was. Yeah, wow, same. It's, I think it might be a rye too. It's, it's soaking into my palate. It's kind of pisy. It's, I think it might be a rye because it has this hard candy sweetness to it. Okay. Like that rock candy, mm, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. like that, that rock candy sweetness. You don't really get that style of sweetness on a bourbon. Interesting. Um, but you can get it on some ryes and I could be totally wrong. Maybe. But, but maybe this not. could just be a really sweet bourbon, which I is what it smelled taste like. Taste it again. Yeah, let's... that took me really off guard. Yeah, let's take. I mean, let's I think you saw my set. reaction. Okay. It's still wow. It's a lot more spicy than I thought. When you say spicy, can you elaborate? Because there's different. This is a kind of a personal niggle that I have with uh, when people say something is spicy. I think it oftentimes gets. Uh, a negative connotation like hot and this isn't hot it's not like hot. alcoholic hot it's not hot it's just making my mouth tingle yeah like my the top of my mouth is kind of tingling it's like the sensation that pepper could give you or would give you but it doesn't have that peppery flavor correct if you're saying nope. it's spicy in the context of like baking spices like things that you might smell in a kitchen if somebody were baking cookies or something like that no it's not that i actually am getting some of that i'm not i'm just getting straight up like pop rocks i guess is what yeah. i'm is there's a sensation of spiciness were you ever a pop rocks fan was that a thing for you it was okay they were okay yeah i always thought that like if you get them in your stocking at christmas i always thought it was a big letdown oh i never got them in my stocking at christmas i got like reese's peanut butter cups i got good I candy once the novelty of the pop rock sensation go like once you've had that a few times you're like yeah yeah i think that's kind of how it was same thing with um those candy necklaces i love them yeah but they're like cool for a second and then all of a sudden you're like walking around with a like a um wet damp <laughs> string around your sounds neck awful. with some candy on it and you're that like absolutely this awful. is kind of gross question pop rocks or fun dip fun dip 100 yeah. percent. I, I was a fun dip fan oh yeah all like still to this day yeah fun dip i'll oh, wreck fun dip <laughs> me yeah. too which is why we can't buy it no <laughs> oh man yeah this is now that i'm saying fun dip this is kind of giving me some fun oh dip it's power got, of suggestion but like the white stick mm -hmm. you're getting a lot of the white stick sugary sweetness yes what? That's something I love about Fun Dip is like the whole thing. It's like thing. two candies in one. Well, yeah. Like they nothing goes to waste. <laughs> well, it depends on Except if you're a ratios uh, kind of person. Like if you have to have a certain amount, then like 
It sounds you know. like something you would be. Yeah. I didn't care. All right. So this is, I mean, it, it's presenting me with exactly what it, like nothing's new here. The nose is so faint. I'm not getting a lot out of the nose. I'm but still, the palette's pretty good. I'm still getting the um, baby powder uh, cotton candy yeah. on the nose once I've gone back. But the spice that spice that comes out in the palette is yeah. crazy. Check this out. I just remembered however many minutes in this video that this is a head-to-head. -head, and we're not just sipping one yeah, sample. Yeah, I know. We need to like stop talking. <laughs> we're not just sipping one and sample and on. hanging out. Let's get into the second one see how it compares. Whoa. Oh, I'm more convinced these are two rise now because this smells like household cleaning products. Does it? Yeah, like a lemony type of um, something or another. Like, f not furniture polish, not like pledge, but like okay. something in that vein. Okay, I can, now that you said it, I can see it, but I didn't get that right off the bat. Yeah, this is like a pine forest with a lemon bush in it. <laughs> Am I you? What's happening? <laughs> I feel like lemon it's isn't earthy. grass. It's not a bush. <laughs> what? Lemon? No, the no lemons grow on trees. Lemon not I was thinking lemongrass. Yeah. Or a tree, but there's no lemon bushes. Grass does not produce fruit, so no, there's no lemons growing. No, out of but the grass. there could be lemongrass in a forest, yep. which is how you get the lemon. That's fair. This is earthy. There's like it's not like quite a forest floor type of vibe but it's almost like lemony tree barky pininess to it on my nose i don't know about you i don't know i i honestly i'm not getting a ton from this so i'm just gonna let you keep going let's get it on the palette <laughs> okay pro tip when in doubt put it in your mouth find out what's going on um this is also belied I, I would say this is, has more on the nose i think this has more on the nose less on the palette yeah I would, that's exactly where I was going with it, yeah. Although it is an interesting flavor, this isn't quite my flavor profile, I don't think, at least on first sip, but it, uh, you know, it's not bad by any means. I think it's, these are both good. It's fine on the palette, this this one, it's fine, but there's nothing to write home about, yeah. per se. Yeah, let's, let's do another, another sip. I don't have a lot to say about either of these, to be honest. Yeah, this second one is um, a little fainter on the palette, that spice, is still there, but it's less pop roxy and it's more not alcohol burny, but it's like a more of a I talked about pepper on the first glass, that sensation. Yeah. This has almost more of like a peppery heat on the back end. I like the back that. of my tongue I can see that. feels like I ate something that food that was spicy and that is leaving that. a little bit of burn. Yeah. And I like that personally speaking. I like that sensation, even though I'm not sure about the flavors in this and I'm not yeah. to spend some time with it. Me too. But I'm getting I'm getting that earthiness. It's leading with earthiness versus the sweetness in glass one. When you say earthiness, what do you mean? Um, not sweetness. <laughs> okay. So you just mean lack of sweetness. Yes. So when I say earthiness, I'm tasting like the earth. Like well. Dirt or grass. A little bit, yeah. But when you say earthiness, you predominantly mean not sweet. Um Predom not, not most of the time. Not necessarily. Okay. Like there's like in this it, instance. In this instance, it's like a little bit. What I think is like a little bit of oak, a little bit of barrel funk. Okay. And that barrel funk from the barrel char is bringing across a little bit of like an earthy vibe. Like it's offsetting. It's leaning away from the sweet, and it's going more toward the it's, barrel char. It's charriness. leaning it more earthy because it's not sweet, but not because you're tasting like grass or dirt. A little bit of earth like okay. okay not dirt you say dirt and people are like that why would i want to drink something that tastes like dirt y'all it's just it's so good earthy like it's like this is a whole foods whiskey is where i'm going with That's, like if you walk yeah. in whole foods and it smells like earthy in there whole foods this is yeah <laughs> what man where'd they come up with the name for that store <laughs> all right this is going to be a tough one to spend some time trying to pick these apart we're going to take our time aaron's already started to clear her palette i'm going to clear mine we're going to start with the second glass go back to the first yep. We'll be back with some ratings, which ones we prefer, all that information, and then we'll find out what in the world we're drinking. Be right back. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Same. <laughs> Where are you at? What did you think about them after spending time with them? What are your ratings? Yada, yada. Okay. So they're both fine. After spending a little bit of time, I went back from, let's start that over. I started a glass two, went to glass one. Glass one started smelling real good, started tasting real good. It was like a Rick house. It got a little more... It felt like it had aged in like the five minutes that I spent away from it. It got a little older. Didn't happen, but that's what it felt like. So my preference is glass one. I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm giving glass two just okay. We're in the exact same spot. What? Yep. Thumbs up on glass one, which for us, that means we like it. We would like to have a bottle of it. 
without knowing how much it costs you. Correct. Class two, just okay. It's not bad whiskey. I think it's actually pretty good whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's just not my flavor profile. After I, or uh, boy, my mouth just stopped working. <laughs> the second glass, after I spent some time with it, it was like a cherry, like cherry hard candy, okay. tree bark, and spearmint. Okay. And and the spearmint turned you off. Um. Yeah. And the cherry hard candy, like that's not my favorite gotcha. flavor yeah, yeah. profile. Mm -hmm. Like I like a little bit more like black cherry rather than like cherry hard candy. Mm -hmm. um, whereas glass one, you're right. As you went back to it, it it opened up even more. Yeah. Um, it was almost like it gave me visions in my head of, like you said, baby powder cotton candy. Mm -hmm. Put a vision in my head of like those big everlasting gobstopper balls. Yeah. Like that type That's of sweetness. That's the big, big ones? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And they're, they're okay. like really pale in color, mm -hmm. but it like had that type of sweetness. But okay. it was like, it was somehow light and airy and dense at the same time. Glass one, I really, really like. Glass two. Well, let's find out how much these are. We'll see if that changes our ratings yeah. before we find out what we're drinking. Yep. That's the ultimate litmus test around here to see if these are worth what they cost. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have to spend money on these. So yeah. we glass number one is, is number 56. 56 mm -hmm. is $50. Man, I might be two thumbs up on that. Where are you? Are you staying thumbs I'm up? I'm staying thumbs up. Hmm. Again, I'm very stingy with my thumbs up. Oh, wait. I don't think I said it in this video. I said it in another video. I'm very stingy this year with my two thumbs up. So. That's fair. I don't love it enough to go two thumbs up. I don't have to have a bottle of it, but I really like it and would like a bottle of it. Thumbs up. What's the price on glass number two? Eighty dollars. I'm buying one and I'm leaving two on the shelf. Yeah, I'm. I'm staying. I'm not dropping the score. I'm saying just okay. Glass two is fine. Um, it's good. I, I think just, it's good whiskey. It's just, I just not. Don't have to have it. Yeah, we we don't have to have it. It's fine. So okay. glass number one, number fifty six, is our one our most preferred. <laughs> What's that reaction? Y'all, I need a moment. Uh-oh. I need a uh -oh. minute. You guys know. You already know because you... If you Maybe if you watch the channel, you're you're already in on what this means. This is Wild Turkey Rare Breed. In glass one? In glass one. I almost went two thumbs up. Really? That's so good. Okay. I have never gotten... So if you don't know, Wild Turkey Rare Breed is one of our favorite... We claim it's our favorite. However, yeah. lately... It won this for me, but lately it's not been like wowing me like it has in the previous years. And it was really good today. Like when I first smelled Wild Turkey Rare Breed, I'm gonna go on a tangent for a second. This is normally Josh's domain, but I'm gonna do it. What's funny is that Stop. everybody, no. everybody in the world knows what Glass Two is, but me. But go, go tangent. I don't even know. I didn't look because I just saw Wild Turkey Rare Breed, oh, okay. and my brain just shut down. The first time I smelled Wild Turkey Rare Breed, I envisioned a really stately British man with a beard in a cardigan with elbow patches in a library. That's what Wild Turkey Rare Breed means to me. Stately? Like, I'm, I'm neither stately nor British. It's fine. I, I can do you. a British accent though. Yes, you can try. Um, but that's what Wild Turkey Rare Breed was for me. And I did not get any of that today, which is wild. Okay, rant over. Don't know what that means, but there's, that's what it means. What's glass number two? Smoke wagon uncut unfiltered. Wow. This is badge 152A. That's um, weird. And the wild turkey is 116.8 proof mm -hmm. and the smoke wagon is 113.4 proof. I feel like they both drank less proofly, yeah. proofy than that to me. Yeah, I will say I do think our ratings are reflective of how we feel about these two products. Yeah. We like to have a bottle of wild turkey Hist red breed around. Historically, we may have a dozen or more bottles of Wild Turkey Rare Breed around. We have a few of the non-chill filtered travel exclusive. We have that's my true a, favorite. A case of the regular, and this didn't hit me the way that Wild Turkey Rare Breed normally hits me. However, your palate does change day to day, Fair. and over time, whiskey itself does change. Not I'm not talking about the bottle. I'm talking about what the the stuff in what the, the distillery puts out. Yeah, it's whiskey is a lot more of an inexact art than it is an exact science. Yeah. So they are tasting and blending and trying to replicate the flavor profile as best as they possibly can, but they're never gonna get it 100% accurate. Yeah. I really like this bottle and I did almost go two thumbs up on it. You did. And that, that's kind of how I feel about Rare Breed. I wanna have a bottle around and if we were out of a bottle, I would almost surely replace it, but I wouldn't run out the door. I would just grab it the next time I'm at the store. Yeah, there. Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered is a product that used to garner a lot of praise, a lot of hype. Um, Aaron Chepinick over at Smoke Wagon has started cranking up production, turning out more and more batches. 
It sits on the shelf now. What? Continue. I just had an epiphany, but go off in it. Okay. So the reason these are in the pool is this is a product that used to be pretty hyped up versus a product that really does sit on the shelves and is less money. Mm. Is this product worth more or is it worth seeking out uh, over Rare Breed? Or maybe if you like Rare Breed, should you maybe look at this? Mm. And I don't think they're really comparable as far as that goes like they're both bourbons they're both m about the same about proof the same point yeah. beautiful bottle kind of a you know a, a bottle only a, a mother could love i don't know like you know it's not ribbery's not impressing anybody Correct. sitting on the shelf that's why it's what's in our decanter over there because it looks a lot better in the decanter than it does in its own yeah. bottle okay. what was your epiphany neither of these are rye that's true they're both high rye though oh and smoke wagon is uh, from everything I know, it's a blend of MGP, sourced MGP that's aged in Nevada. And it is, uh, MGP has a 36% rye bourbon and a 21% rye bourbon. And this is a mix of both. And it definitely came across with more rye notes yeah. compared to Rare Breed, which sure. is 13% uh, rye in the mash bill. But nonetheless, this is, this tracks. I'm yeah. not even, I'm not even... I'm not mad about this at all. I'm not mad about how the results turned out. I'm just a little sad that I didn't get the British man in the library. Mm -hmm. That's what I drink rare breed to go find is my British man in the library. Yeah. I mean, this is coming across with that cotton candy, a little citrusiness, yeah, yeah. which a lot of people talk about wild turkey. Well, yeah. If you haven't tried rare breed, I think this is worth checking out. If you have not tried Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered, they are micro batched, like small batches, mm. and they label it on the back as to which batch it is. And this was 100. We, 152, you saw it. I yeah. think. But they're like, I mean, they may be over 200 now. Um, oh. Everyone's going to be a little different. You'll get more consistency with this, and you'll spend less money. And we preferred it. You may prefer uh, Uncut Unfiltered. Yeah. Our palettes are just our own, and this video is just our opinion. But if your opinion is that it was a pretty good video, then you could subscribe to the channel and like it. That would help out a ton. Yeah. You can hit the bell. We live stream once a month. We would love for you to join us. And while you're down there around all that stuff, go ahead and hit the video description for a link to our Patreon. We share samples over there with our community, or our community is always sharing samples with each other, rather. Yeah. We're always helping each other find bottles. It's a great community to be a part of. And that's where we release our barrel picks. We do bonus content, pop-up live streams, a monthly Patreon live stream, all kinds of good stuff's going down over there. So you can find that in the video description below, Absolutely. as well as a link to our merchandise, which neither of us are wearing because we're terrible salesmen. That's not why we're here. We're it's here to fine. have fun with you guys. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. So you can find that down there as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Yep. That's it for this That's one. it for today. Be good to each other, everyone. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.